everybody, this is GGB, Colos Puppers, and today we're joining back into Patrick Mahomes' uh, destroyed face. But actually, the Big 12 at ACC game, uh, as you see the score, uh, ACC is winning 6 to nothing. ACC Buccaneers, Big 12 49ers. So let's see what we have today for these two football teams. Luke Keekley's looking rather happy with his 59 uniform. We're just gonna circle this this team for a few minutes because you know this is an amazing angle. Apparently, it's like the best angle ever. Who wouldn't want to just you know stare at the ACC Buccaneer defenders just as you slowly fade away, just like kind of move away, just slowly move. Away. Anyways, you don't remember Big Twelves in the getting close to the red zone of the ACC. It's time to throw. He throws it short. Oh, well, I don't know about short. He picks up about 10 yards, picks up the first down. So, very good play. For This is the first Big 12 drive where we saw it really working out. That first drive didn't go too poorly for him, but they ended up... Oh, did they miss it? I feel like they, they threw an interception. That was it. They were driving down the field. They threw an interception. So, they bring in their fullback, but... Oh, Rukowski. Uh, and he gets, they get all the way to the five-yard line, brings up the second and two. Good run by Joe Mixon. And if the Big 12 wants to win this game, Joe Mixon has to be a big part of this game. Joe Mixon was such a huge uh, part of that Conference USA win. He's got to be the same thing here today. So they go past. He scans the field. He throws it, but it's incomplete. Defended pretty well by the ACC Buccaneers defense, and we're seeing a third and two from the five-yard line. So let's see if the Big 12 has to settle for a field goal or if they are going to try to punch it in here. So third and two. Let's see what Kyle Shanahan draws up for this offense. Drops back the pass. He throws it. Touchdown to Mr. Tyler Lockett, and the Big 12 has a chance to take the lead here. Uh, I like to point out the Big 12 are, it is the underdogs in this game. So if you do like to do what I do in normally any football game in real life, mostly, uh, I like to root for the underdogs. I feel like most people do. <laughs> they broke the camera. That wasn't very nice of them. Tyler Lockett, you got to pay to fix that camera. But I normally like to root for the underdogs. And if you haven't been watching the tournament so far, Big 12 is the underdog coming into this football game. Almost blocked there, but they're the underdog here. Even though they have Patrick Mahomes, ACC has more stacked team offensively and defensively, and they still have a very good player in uh, Lamar Jackson. So we're seeing the Big 12 up 7-6. to six. Let's see if Lamar Jackson, Bruce Arians, can lead his team all the way down the field, get a touchdown before, I don't know, before the hits the ten minute mark, I don't know. I'm a dumbo. Leave me alone. So, thirteen minutes fifty one seconds left. Game time in this episode. Anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying the series. I'm really enjoying it, and uh, I get to see which conference is the best conference. So I mean, who wouldn't want to see that? It's kind of like a big debate in college football. SEC is like, oh, our conference is the greatest. We're the best conference, and then. You know, they're just not that great, honestly. But, you know, eh, what you gonna do? But Big 12 has a pretty good, uh, at least in my opinion, pretty good argument. You have a lot of good football teams there. Ohio State, Penn State, Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, Michigan State, Minnesota now. So, they're a pretty good conference, in my opinion. ACC, they do have a definitely have an argument with Clemson, but it's just the fact that all the other teams are no good. Big 12 has no defense. You know, stuff like that. They all have arguments. Group of five teams believe they should be taken seriously. I actually agree with them. There are some really good group of five teams that just aren't taken seriously for some reason. You have UCF. Memphis normally isn't taken that seriously. Boise State. A lot of these teams can be... App State. App State is the one... That really doesn't get a lot of recognition. But the UCF's the one that really put 
that and Boise State. Boise State had that big win in the Fiesta Bowl over Oklahoma a few years back. But UCF going, being Auburn, was a huge win for a group of five team, even though they probably will never make the college football playoffs if the rules stand the way they are. What a move by Mr. Dalvin Cook. But it really is enjoyable to see, like, which con- the arguments for the different conferences. Because a lot of the times, if you're arguing, we could, you could say, we brought this player into the NFL. Like, for instance, Penn, uh, Big Ten fans, you're, we brought Tom Brady in the NFL, so obviously we're a good conference. SEC's like, we, got, we brought Von Miller into the NFL. At this point, ACC's like Lamar Jackson. And D Hop. So let's see what you hear. So they go run with Dalvin Cook. He is immediately stuffed. I'm sorry, Devonta Freeman. And then you have Big Twelve be like Mahomes. Pac twelve be like Aaron Rodgers. Mountain West Bobby Wagner. Independence. Say Stefan to it, I guess. That'd be my contribution. He's time to throw it. He dumps it off, and it's going to bring up a third and short. DeAndre Hopkins is really your biggest threat of this team. I mean, everyone else, I'm like, they're not super frightening, which is why they're not Big Ten SEC caliber. <sighs> Scariness. I would never want... I do not want to play the Big Ten SEC in the playoffs. Okay, so Devonta Freeman looks like he picked up that first down. Ooh, but they call it fourth and inches, which means Patrick Mahomes and the Big 12 offense are going to get that ball back with a chance to take an even greater lead than, you know, one point. <laughs> that is barely a lead, as definition of numbers and leads go. But... Good tackle by the Penn State guys. And we're going to get to see a punt here by Mr. Matt Bosher. We saw a lot of that in the first half. A lot of punts. Punt, 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 punt. So they punt the ball away. And it looks like it's shanked. Yeah, they're going to get the ball at the 39-yard line. Horrible punt, really. But Mahomes is going to come out on this field. And we're going to see if he can take advantage of this. Pretty great field position. Let's see what happens here on this first and 10. 39-yard line. And if Mahomes can easily drive this team out on the field. Problem is he doesn't have the firepower he usually has. Tyree Kill, McCole Hardman, Sammy Watkins, they're all just super fast. Now, actually, he's going to be – Sammy Watkins is on the ACC team. So, so they go run here, and he's just, you know, immediately stuffed, bringing up a second and 10. About 11 and a half minutes left in this third, I mean, second quarter. But, I mean, if you're an ACC fan, your window is now. I mean, the, actually, it's not now. I got to take that. But Lamar Jackson is a very young quarterback. He definitely can grow, but he is a pretty high overall right now, so I might want to take advantage of that. So, they run it with Mixon. He gets a few yards. But what I'm saying is, one of their big players on the defensive side of things, Luke Keekley, is retiring next year, so he will not be in Madden 20. So that's definitely going to be disappointing for ACC fans. It's going to be looking at someone else in the middle that's not Bobby. It was not Luke Keekley. It's definitely a. Oh, it's different. We're going to see Terrell Edmonds definitely playing for it. So let's see. He has time. He throws it over the middle to Mr. Tyler Lockett, who's definitely proving to be the main guy for him early. Five receptions, 70 yards, one touchdown. It just it doesn't seem like he wants to go to anyone else, which, I mean, is understandable. Tyler Lockett's a pretty great receiver. He's definitely the guy I'd want to throw to on this team. That I feel like Mark Andrews would be a reliable one. But we have... So that's Quiet Koski. He's uh, the middle linebacker for this Big 12 team, if you didn't know, from West Virginia. It's a very important part of this team. Also, you have... <laughs> You have Tyler Lockett, but really, if you saw an episode... So if you want to see the Big 12 roster, check out uh, Conference USA at Big 12 c- Quarter 1 for that ros- that complete roster. I don't feel like going over the rosters every single time they play because it's actually really hard to do the voice overlay for them. So I did it once, and if you want to go 
learn the full roster. I mean, you already know the starting lineup, but if you want to learn the full roster, where all these guys went to college, that you want to check that out. But what I was saying is the Big 12 is the overalls other than Tyler Lockett, who is that's not, that was Kenny Stills who made the catch, if you were wondering. But other than Tyler Lockett, they're all really the same. So I tried to make it as accurate as possible. I'm not trying to pick favorites, you know. So I went experience mainly, which is why Kenny Stills is starting over people like Sterling Shepard. That's really I was a lot of the Big 12 receivers because those are the only three that really get involved game-wise. You see Sterling Shepard, uh, Kenny Stills, and Tyler Lockett catch a decent amount of passes. So, you know, Chris Carson just immediately because stopped. Chris Carson, the arson, he is actually – they actually have a solid running back room, in my opinion. I think it's stronger than the ACCs, even though they have Dalvin Cook, who I believe is one of the best in the NFL. Joe Mixon's a really good running back. You have Chris Carson, Carson the arson, because I like he lights up defenses. He's a very good running back, in my opinion. So they go stretch here, and Joe Mixon's immediately stopped. But and then you have third string Damian Williams, who just proved to be an amazing player for the Chiefs. But other than uh, Dalvin Cook, it's really bad running back. I mean, you have Devonta Freeman, who is just really not that great, and you have. Lamar Miller, mm. he is not going to be. He hasn't started. He didn't start last year. That was mainly because he got hurt. So the Texans had to go get Carlos Hyde, who actually turned out to be an amazing pickup, and Duke Johnson Jr., who also made big time plays for them. So he's time to throw. He almost throws an interception on his third and thirteen play, and it looks like they're going to be settling for a field goal, taking a ten to six lead. About eight minutes and eight and a half minutes left in this first quarter. It's a very, 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 very uh, surprise. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I expect this team to compete. It's it's always going to compete with Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, which is why I'm excited to see the ACC and the Big 12 almost every year at this point because you got Lamar Jackson, you got Patrick Mahomes, and that's just going to be – those are two phenomenal quarterbacks who are just going to shine for years to come. Um, the Big Ten's looking in trouble. I'm not going to lie. Uh Tom Brady, Drew Brees, they'll probably be out of the league in a couple of years. And Russell Wilson's getting up there in age, too, which means that after those two guys retire, what are we looking at like, so far to replace them? Who we have now, we have Kirk Cousins and Dwayne Haskins Jr. We don't know what Haskins can do yet, but, I mean, that's just not an ideal situation. But... A Big Ten will hopefully recruit some talent. SEC, I mean, it's not super young, but it's not super... I mean, it's not super old, but it's not super young either. But, I mean, Dak's pretty young. Matt Stafford is... He's not old, but he's. I'd say he's middle-aged quarterback-wise. He's going to start regressing in a couple years. That's why the Lions window needs to be now. And then you have... I think... Uh, who else is in the SEC? I see Ryan Tannehill's about middle age quarterback too as well. I, mean, I don't know. I think he has about ten more year, good years left in him. So maybe not middle age. He's he's a good amount of years left in him. But uh, who else is see? Pac twelve. I just don't know. Uh, cause Aaron Rodgers, he's gonna go away in a couple of years. And if you look at second, third string quarterbacks backing him up, you got. Sam Darnold and Jared Goff. And I mean, the only other Pac-12 quarterback I can think of is Minshew. And Minshew might turn out to be really good for Jacksonville. Uh, my sports analyst's father does not think that Minshew is going to be that great of a quarterback. But, you know, I kind of believe in him. I believe in him a good amount. Like, I think he could turn out to be the next sixth or seventh. I don't remember what route he was drafted in, but... I could think he could be one of those next Tom Brady esque. I don't know if he's gonna be. I don't think anyone is gonna be Tom Brady. It's just not gonna happen. We got Tom Brady's just been so great for so long. It's just not gonna happen. But I could see him becoming Tom Brady esque. But 
And then the s- smaller schools, uh, they're going to be good for a long time. I'm not going to lie. Jimmy G is a young quarterback. Carson Wentz is a young quarterback you have. Other than that third string, you're looking pretty rough. You're not going to have a great third string quarterback. It's just not going to happen. But it's fine. You, know, you barely ever get the third string guys. I mean, Fitzpatrick's going to, Fitzpatrick's going to, Fitz Magic, I should say, is going to retire soon. And you have Joe Flacco. He's going to retire soon. I just don't know any other smaller school quarterbacks other than that who's really, you know, pretty good. And so. But then you have. Obviously, the Big 12 here. Holmes is going to be great for a long time. You have Mayfield and you have Murray. <laughs> it's weird how that lined up, but they're, they're all really good quarterbacks and they could all, but I feel like Mahomes is going to lead this team for a long time. Just like I think Daniel Jones is a very good quarterback, so is Deshaun Watson, but I just feel like Lamar Jackson is going to lead this team for a long time. And then you have the Mountain West. Actually, the Mountain West is going to be in a real quarterback controversy next year. Third and 10. Ugh. Lamar Jackson just tears him up with his legs. But we're going to have a real controversy, quarterback controversy next year. No, I guess it's not a controversy. It's just go with highest overall. But it's going to be really interesting. See next year, if you're watching the regular season, you got Derek Carr, who's the current starter. But Josh Allen could end up with the Bills, could end up playing his way into that starting role. And he couldn't end up being the second best quarterback in that draft class. I mean, obviously, Lamar Jackson might be the best, but he looked, honestly, like he didn't look fantastic. Could he, he didn't look bad. I don't understand why people hating on him. Immediately tackled. What a good play. But you have Josh Allen, you got Derek Carr, and then this year they're drafting Jordan Love into the NFL. Might be a first round draft pick. I, I, I don't see it quite yet, but. I Maybe mean, this is because I didn't watch him in 2018. That's what everyone's saying is that 2019 wasn't as good. I just don't know. But that's just me. He could end up playing his way into the starting role. Uh, but we also have... But moving on, American. Americans, they're going to hit us. They're in a slump right now, quarterback-wise. Uh, I think their best chances... Mackenzie Milton is going to be coming out of UCF at some point. If they could get them on the, him on their team and he does well, I could see that working out for him. Also, the Memphis quarterback is a very strong, capable quarterback. I could see that working out maybe. That's the only thing. America, Americans looking bad right now. Case Keenum and Blake Bortles having the starting two. Not looking great for him. Case Keenum probably will start again next year. So they bring quarterback spies on him, but you know, he just is Lamar Jackson. <laughs> he rolls out, he just jukes out this guy. <sighs> he is just so great. But uh, moving on, who's in MAC? The MAC's window is closing. Sorry. If, oh, wait. Never mind. I, I just completely skipped independence. Their quarterback situation is not die. I mean,. They're only, at the very most, they're going to have three quarterbacks in the NFL at any time. It's just there's six teams. There's just not that many teams out there, uh, colleges, that produce. Like, these teams, they're not that great. Other than BYU and Notre Dame, who legit produce almost 100% of those players on the team. You have Army, who has, like, one. New Mexico State, who has, like, one. And UMass has, like, one. (laughs) And... Liberty, legit, the only player they have is third stringer Josh Woodrum, who I don't even know is going to be in the game for for a couple of years. But Ian Book, hopefully, will come out of Notre Dame. He can take over that probably second string at this point. Sean Kaiser will be third string. But Taysom Hill has a, definitely has a solid future, and if he gets to be the starting quarterback for the Saints and actually proves to be a good quarterback, it's incomplete there for DeAndre Hopkins. Wow. But... If he proves to be a good quarterback, I can feel like his overall could go up. And we could end up actually seeing a serious growth in talent. Because if we could get Taysom Hill as a starting quarterback, you have Mountain West getting starting quarterback, MAC would have a starting quarterback. You'd have nine teams in this tournament with a starting quarterback in real life as their starting quarterback in the turn as yeah, in the tournament. So it's it's actually gonna see a big growth here, but the Americans in trouble. The MAC the window is closing. It, it truly is. Uh, Big Ben's never going to be. He's not going to play forever. 
And I think we're seeing close to his final years. He did not look great in those first couple games of the year. It might have just been, I don't know, something happening going on. His elbow got hurt. Maybe he was, his elbow was still, was still getting hurt. So they're going to kick the field goal here. Bring out a one-point game once again. Good hold by Matt Ryan. Up through the uprights by Harrison Bucker, the man, the myth, legend himself from Georgia Tech. But uh, other than that, Conference USA, honestly, I don't see a quarterback over there you know, transforming into a starting quarterback suit. I just don't. I'm sorry. Uh, Nick Mullins, he's a very good quarterback, very solid quarterback for him. But, you know, he's not a starter. Yeah, I don't think yet. He could eventually become one. But I think he's a backup right now. Uh, but Nick Mullins isn't bad. He definitely led him to a very close game this time. I think the main need for that team is offensive line help. If you can get that happening, then you can get Aaron Jones going. That's a big part of your offense. So let's see what... Tyler Lockett can do on the turn. It turns out the guy can't block for him. He could have done more. But let's see if the Big 12 scores before halftime. And then finally, last team, Sun Belt. Uh, well, they're probably going to be the Eagles forever, not going to lie. But uh, ideally, you'd want to get a quarterback into Madden. That's what would be an ideal situation for the Sun Belt. I. If they want to win, they can't have the two the second worst quarterback in the NFL starting for them. And it's not that Brandon Silver's played horribly. It's just that if you can get him in real life in the game, which is what the Madden producer should do, if he can be in the game, then the Sun Belt team really does have a chance. But also I've heard there's a very good offensive line candidate coming out of University of Louisiana, Lafayette, Raging Cajuns. So that could definitely be a helpful thing for them. They're definitely helpful to their offensive line struggles. But we got about two and a half minutes left in this first half. So they get a handoff to a mix and just automatically just absolutely killed by Mr. Luke Keekley. And we're gonna see a third and ten probably after this two minute warning if Kyle Shanahan is smart about their his clock management skills. He's always good at clock management. It's been his strong suit for a while, but we're gonna get to see which team is going to have this lead heading into halftime? Right now, Chiefs have a one-point lead, that 10 dime ball game. Uh, only touchdown on the day goes to the Big 12. They really have not driven down the field a lot today. Mahomes this way made, made way more mistakes than Lamar. But fortunately for them, they weren't able to cash in. So they go, run here. They chew... About four seconds off the clock, get, I'd say about six yards. I think six was what it was. Yeah, six yards. They're going to be putting it for their own 32-yard line. But let's see if Lamar Jackson and Bruce Arians and DeAndre Hopkins can go down the field and get this lead before our halftime or if we're going to be seeing the Big 12 have to have the lead at halftime. So let's see. Big kick by Mr. Trisway. What a punt. Honestly, perfect. It could not be a more perfect punt. He just has it, like, you know, just roll. Just kind of, like, stops at the one-yard line. <sighs> Seriously, now. I mean, you got to be thinking if you're the ACC Buccaneers, you got to worry about, you know, getting a safety. And if I'm the Big Tom Blitz, that, that would be my defensive court at Nader. <laughs> But honestly, me as a defensive coordinator, blitz. I bring Gage eight. I don't know. I don't care. What the? I they can try for the big play, but I'd rather have a sack for a safety or just stopping him short for playing a game. Short for a safety. I'd be bringing a blitz here. Like even if you don't want to go full on, yeah, but they go just drop everyone. Okay, DeAndre Hop can just. Makes it from their own one-yard line. A horrible situation to the, their own 21, which is not a bad situation. DeAndre Hopkins is one of the best receivers in the NFL, and I still don't understand why the Texans traded him away. As a Texans fan, I think B fire Bill O'Brien. <laughs> so they go no huddle here. About a minute, 20 seconds left. Let's see if they can drive down the field. They basically have forever in the pocket. 
Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so that was actually played really well, extremely well by 23. Honestly, I don't know who that is. It's Tony Jefferson the third, and honestly, that was, I don't know if you could play it much better. You covered the guy, and then you got right next to Lamar so that when he tried to run, you could just tackle him really easily. So Bruce Arians calls a timeout. It's going to be a second and seven without a minute and change left on the clock. Yeah, well, one one penny. So a minute and one penny. So 24 seconds. Uh, minute one second. They're on their own 24-yard line. Let's see what Lamar Jackson and his offense can do here. Okay. Snap the ball to him. He goes play action here. He is basically all the time in the world, but he s tries to run, slides, because he was about to get, you know, absolutely destroyed by Xavier Howard. And honestly, the Big 12 might have one of the best secondaries in the entire thing. I don't know. ACC has a pretty good secondary, but I'm just saying the Big 12 secondary is honestly their strong point of this team, this defense, I mean. So they go run here for Lamar. He slides, and obviously, if you're the Big 12, you take this timeout. You could get, you're going to get the ball back with about 31 seconds on the field. Let's see. The punt takes about, let's say, five seconds. 26 seconds left. You can try for a couple deep passes with Patrick Mahomes. Lamar Jackson looks very disappointed on those sidelines. So, let's see. A punt. You can try for a block here. I think a block might be a smart thing to go for. But instead, they go return. So, I don't know what in the world that was by Tyler Lockett, but he said, you know, run straight towards all the ACC players trying to tackle you. But they have 23 seconds left at their own 23-yard line, ironically. But let's see what Patrick Mahomes can do here. Maybe they can he can go deep pass to Tyler Lockett or Kenny Stills or Sterling Shepard proved to be a – he did that – caught that deep pass at the end of the first half against Conference USA. Maybe they can do that here today. But let's see, 23 seconds left. See what they do here. Actually, it looks like they're just going to run out the clock with Joe Mixon. See how they go run here. He's just, you know, automatically stuffed. But we have about 15 seconds left of actual game clock. Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button. It makes me feel so happy and warm inside when I see those likes and subscribes that aren't from me because that makes me very sad when I'm the only one that does it. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. It really means a lot to me. It makes me feel all warm inside. Anyways, it's GGB, Coast Puffer, saying adios, amigos.